Hi, welcome Pascal. I'm really glad that I have you here in the PC Business Talk series. And um, in, without further ado, I'd like you to get uh, um, the voice and, and just give us a little short introduction of who you are and why you are here on this call. Well, hi, Sasha. It's great uh, to be here with you. Well, who am I? I'm Pascal. I'm a neuroscientist turned entrepreneur. I love brains, so I did dissections uh, of brains in the US, connected living brains with machines. And my business model actually is we build artificial intelligence. We believe there is a principle of intelligence. We believe there is human level AI, and this will also be our product to make it uh, for the people. And why I'm here today, I'm here because I'm a happy prime computer user, and I like uh, your way of being an entrepreneur, so big respect to you. No, oh, thank you so much. It's really kind of you. Yes, uh, more than that, we actually know each other since about nine years. I think uh, probably become friends. I'm really happy about that, and uh, you're, you're kind of uh, someone I really look up to. So thank you for, so much for being here in this call. And uh, we are squash uh, squash partners, Sasha. Yes. Very important as well. Yeah. Okay. And unfortunately, I never really won against you. So this is still on my uh, on my uh, big uh, list. Right. Cool. <laughs> Um, so let's start. Uh, let's get with the first question. Um, how do you think will AI or machine learning um, change our everyday life? Yeah, I think we need to differentiate between AI and machine learning. So let's talk about the real thing about artificial intelligence. Ultimately, we don't need to work anymore in the future. I think uh, the machines and the robots should take away all the boring jobs so that you really can focus on the fun part in life. Uh, I can't wait uh, for that future, and I hope it will be very soon. Cool. So this is... I, I also have a question to you, Sasha. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so your company has the ambition to become the purpose brand in sustainable IT solutions. I mean, I see that also with my computer. What does this actually mean? Yeah, well, well uh, when you think we need to look at this this way, Pascal. So climate strike movements successfully draw international attention to climate change nearly every day now. And we have made it our mission to raise the world's awareness for sustainable IT solutions. And I think ICT is a central pillar to response to climate change. In everything we do, ICT will actually bring us further to that goal. And we want to become the purpose brand of sustainable IT solutions by tackling the global megatrends. So e-waste, lack of digitization, resource and energy scarcity. So creating an ecosystem of collaboration opportunities that actually simplifies and is driven by the purpose to help climate action goals by set actually by private, public and the state sector. I hope you like that answer. <laughs> yes, yes, and made it very clear. Yeah. So being being in this this um amazing sector you're in, in the AI space, in in, the, in, in so many different robotic spaces. I, I really know that you're, you're probably in, into that as well. Um, what about science fiction? Science fiction movies and novels um, based on the idea that AI will turn against us. How do you really think is that realistic as a scenario in the future, in your opinion? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very interesting question because it is asked so frequently about Terminate, when will they take over the world and how scary it is. I think there are two uh, answers to this. Uh, first is, if we do not build human level AI here in Switzerland or here in Europe, I guarantee you, it will be built by a big Asian country or by a big tech company, and then it gets really scary. So I think uh, we should uh, uh, do an effort to build AI here. The other thing is, uh, it's like fire. How uh, likely is it that fire will turn against us? I think uh, we are doing good in, um, in domestic domesticating fire. I think we will manage ultimately all intelligence. So uh, there is no alternative. We need to be able to build AI and we need to be able to manage and cope with it. And there will be no, no spring over that one day it is depending, not, more, not anymore depending on us, but being stronger than us. Yeah, I think that's always uh, the danger. I mean, I'm completely depending on my iPhone. Without my iPhone, I'm completely lost. However, I free my mind for other things. So I think we may, we may get completely dependent on AI, but that's a good thing. It's a symbiosis. And as everything, it can turn against us, of course. It's like a tool. If you misuse the tool, AI will be the worst for humanity. If you use it properly, we can build paradise with AI. Let's build paradise. 
Okay, I like that. You mentioned um, if we are not uh, into this 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 building uh, in Europe, then a Chinese company will actually, or or the government will go after that. So your your kind of a, a mission is to win the AI race against China or the US. How do you think you or or the people you involved can actually do that? Yeah, it's actually almost hopeless if you look at the AI landscape. I mean. In Europe, we have Brexit and Mexit and then lockdowns, whereas in, the, in China and in the US, they invest billions into AI. We are still like digitalizing here in, in Switzerland. So uh, how do we try to do it? We try to open a third way, an alternative to building AI for the government, an alternative to building AI for a large tech company. How we do that? We unite the 300,000 smartest people in the world and build the largest AI lab. We do that in virtual reality so that we don't have barriers and hurdles. And I think Switzerland is leading in that uh, kind of technology and we really should accentuate on that pole position. And yeah, we tried and if we don't, then uh, we certainly cannot win the race. So let's do a big effort and build the largest AI lab in Switzerland very, very soon. So those 300,000 people you want to connect are a brilliant minds. So also, I guess, different universities interconnected or, or how do you go, go there? Yes, I don't so much believe in these um, collaborations between like large governmental bodies or institutions. We collaborate directly with uh, research groups, with individuals. So we select people like you, for example, say, hey, Sasha, you're a smart guy. We have this and that challenge. How would you solve it? So we identify talents individually based on their traces in the Internet, based on their research publications. And I think we are in a good way to have these 300,000 talents together very soon. This is sensational and I'm just amazed always when you talk about that. Well, I also have a question back to you, then, uh, Sasha. I mean, I know you since quite a few years and when getting to know you, people rapidly, like, rapidly get the information that you are very much into motivating people around you and that you act in a, in a, in a sustainable way. Why is that so? Why are you like that, Sasha? Well, I think um, no corner of the globe is actually immune to the devastating consequences of climate change. Um, it is the defining crisis of our time. This is a decade is about that and it's happening even more quickly than we are than we feared. But we are far from being powerless and in the face of this global threat, we need to be structured together and only if we can act quickly and consistently, we can limit those global warming effects. You and I, we are both dads and looking on that current situation, I'm sure you agree with me that we we want to preserve the natural basis of life for, yeah, uh, for and win actually a future worth living for the present and the future generations. And this is a problem that is above all and we need to be there together, um, not just humans, but institutions, um, ideas, thoughts and I think that the infinite cost of climate change reaches, reaches actually irre irreversible heights and now is the time to be bold and to have this collective action. So climate emergency is a race we are currently losing, unfortunately, but it's a race we still can and we need to win. So I think we have the same goals. We like to build paradise and prepare the future also for our children. So I think that's a very ambitious mission and uh, I wish you all the luck, of course. Yeah? Thank you. I, I think that that we, yeah, I think that we more align on the mission um, actually than we think because a lot of mm -hmm. things are interconnected and that's how I see it, um, like any, connecting the dots. Um, mm -hmm. and that's, sure. I mean, you, you have a background that's just amazing about Michelangelo and he's all about connecting the dots. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but, but your, your, your thoughts, your minds, I mean, you want to, to crack the brain code, right? And to you are on the brink to create the world's biggest AI lab. But what a lot of people don't know, you're you're a pilot. And how does this fit into the Pascal we know? I mean, do you still have the time to practice? Well, unfortunately not. Um, I love extreme things. I love um, G forces. So I love aerobatics. Uh, back in the days when I was a young guy. I flew uh, these, uh, these aircraft. I think I would be a danger uh, to the air. So uh, um, I, flying myself, I don't do that anymore. However, last year I flew like in a MiG, in an old MiG. Uh, I wanted to do like a stratospheric flight, which was very, very amazing. 
and I definitely passed out about with uh, seven Gs. So I know where my limits are, uh, and I, I find it still fascinating. I love those G-forces. I love being in the sky, and maybe one day also on Mars. Who knows? So I, I, I like these um, these aircrafts and these space shuttles and rockets a lot. Cool. This is this is sensational. So yeah, uh, really impressionable. Thank you so much for this part. Um, every time at the end of, of this cool interview series, I I do a, a, some sort of a small game, and we changed this game in 21 to be a game uh, of uh, underrated, overrated, and I'd like you to be part of that. So I'm giving you a few words, and you tell me if you find them underrated or overrated, and you maybe you can give me an opinion on that as well. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. So. AI. <laughs> Highly overrated. There is no AI these days, just brute force computing. Okay. Internet of things. Extremely highly overrated. My refrigerator runs out of stock of milk and everything. Doesn't talk to the do the grocery store. Doesn't work. So highly overrated. All right. What about being busy? Well, I think that's very hard to say. Um, the, um, the boundaries between private life and business life really are mixed up. And I definitely think people are getting more and more busy. So I think it's underrated. People are indeed more busy than back in the days, especially because of the Corona crisis. So underrated. All right. Okay. What about the term of brain jogging? Oh, highly underrated. We need uh, the brain is like a muscle. We need to do brain jogging every day. We should do much, much more. What about science fiction? Also highly underrated. I think we need to pay much, much more attention to science fiction. A lot of things have already been thought. For example, a world without uh, money. So we should definitely pay more attention to science fiction. Okay. What about impact investment? I also think that's underrated. We should do much more in impact investment. I mean, we only should invest in stuff that makes our planet a better place. So highly underrated as well. What about re-engineering waste? Well, that's the very same, highly underrated. I think, uh, of course, in Switzerland, maybe a few other countries around us, they do this uh, uh, this recycling, this re-engineering waste. However, in most countries in the world, this doesn't happen. So it's highly underrated. We should do much more in that field. Thank you so much, Pascal. This was amazing. Great answers. Thank you for being here on this panel. And I hope to see you soon again. Thanks, lots of show. Bye-bye. Thanks, you. Bye.